Hello and welcome back. So in the last video, we were looking at the output from an ANOVA model and it looks something like this, okay? And for right now, this is fine. Uh, but the first thing that you really wanna do after making a, an ANOVA model like this is to check the residuals, okay? And what I mean by residuals essentially is just how much the data we have varies around the mean, okay? And that formula, that formula looks like this, okay? Where uh, generally it's the data that we have, so each, each observation that we have per group minus the predicted value. And for us right now in ANOVA, it's just gonna be the mean of the group, okay? Um, so we have four groups, that means we have four means. Uh, so for our first group, it'll be like the first observation for the first group minus the mean of that group. Okay, and that gets us one value and we do it again and again and again until we get a big, a big, big thing of residual values per group. Okay. Okay. So I, this is not, you know, you're not never, ever, ever going to be doing this by hand. I promise. I promise. Um, but what this tells us is essentially how consistent the data are within the group. Okay. As far as the variance goes from group to group. Um, this this blank here, uh, ought to be totally honest, I cannot remember what goes in there. Um, I believe it's homogenous, <laughs> um, but consistent is also fine, right? And so what we're going to be doing in this class is we're going to be visualizing these residuals, the difference between the data we have and the mean per group. Uh, we're going to be visualizing them in a plot that looks something like this. Okay, and what we want is something that's patternless, okay, across the whole figure, uh, seemingly random with equal scatter, okay, with equal scatter. So something like uh, this first, uh, this first kind of plot we have here uh, has pretty consistent variance in the first group, and, and we'll get to this in R in just a moment. Pretty consistent variance in the second group, right? Uh, but this group here is a bit more spread out as far as the difference between the observed data and the mean of this group, okay? And then this fourth group is consistent with the other two. This is an issue, okay? We are making a comparison. We're trying to, we're trying to make a comparison between all of these groups, but one of these groups is very much unlike the other groups as far as the spread goes, okay? As far as the spread goes of this difference uh, data essentially. And then here in the second plot, we have kind of a fanning out, right? We have this pattern here uh, of increasing variance, okay? Of increasing residual values, okay? So this is a no-go, this is a no-go. And we'll get how we can fix this uh, in the future. Uh, but for right now, this is what we want, okay? We, we, well, this is actually what we don't want. We would like to have all of these points here look just about the same. Okay, across the groups. We also would like to look at the distribution of the residuals, okay? Uh, again, these are representing um, residuals. We also can look at the histogram of the residuals and that should be seemingly normal, okay? Capital N normal, symmetric and bell-shaped. Okay, how do we do that? How do we do that in R? Well, let's just go back. Let's just go back and do it. So we'll call this residual, oops. Re Good Lord, residual diagnostics, okay? And how do we do that? Well, the first thing we wanna do is install a new package. Whoa, because it's gonna make it so much easier with this new thing, okay? So we come down here into the console. Let's all do this together. We'll go ahead and type in install.packages and we get the quotation marks. And this new package is called GG Fortify. GG Fortify, you run that. It's gonna take a moment. Uh, it's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. We need to grab it. Uh, grabs it from the internet. So you do have to be uh, connected to the internet, which I am. Very cool. And now we only have to do that one time. We only have to install this package once. But every time we wanna use it, at least in a new session like this, we need to call it in just like the tidyverse, okay? And this, you see here, type in GG and it kind of gives us, it, you may have a bunch of things here, you may not but we want GG Fortify. Okay, very cool, very cool. Now, some new functions here, some new functions so we can get a nice looking plot. 
Uh, it's only one line if we want the most basic version of it. And it's just called auto plot, okay? Auto plot. And what do we give? What do we give auto plot here? Well, if I hit tab, the only thing that it wants right now is an object. And this function from the GG Fortify library is super smart. Uh, it can um, identify uh, the type of object we give it without us specifying uh, anything more specific than just this. It's awesome. It's awesome. So if I go like this, I hit object. What do I want to put in there? Well, I want to calculate the difference between the observed values that we have and the group means, okay, per group, per group. Thankfully, I don't have to do actual, like actual math. Um, I can just put in model here, because if we look at this list, this is a bunch of gibberish, but we already see that it's got the residuals calculated for us, which is awesome. So when we type in autoplot object equals, if I just put in the model, it's going to already realize, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of know that I want to plot these residuals. Okay. And if I just hit plot there, we get a couple of warning messages, whatever. It's, this is not a big deal. Um, check it out. Whoa, we get a bunch of weird looking plots here. Okay. And the nice thing too about this is I'm not too keen on this kind of gray background. You, you may be, and that's, that's okay if you are. Um, this function also takes the same... Um, functions as ggplot, at least the same kind of like theme functions. So I can run that and it cleans it up just a little bit. Very nice, very nice. So let's go back to the PowerPoint and kind of get an idea of, of what the heck these things are. Okay, so we've got the code here. This library easily retrieves this four figure plot, right? So these are four uh, figures put into one thing. It's very cool. It is very cool. Oh my gosh. So what does this tell us? Let's kind of blow it up here. It's the same and just, I just want to double check. Yeah, it is the same. <laughs> so what does this tell us? Well, what are we even looking at? <laughs> what are we looking at? Well, we know that uh, we're looking at least for some patternless uh, and seemingly random um, shapes here, okay? And, but which one do I look at? Which one of these do I really need? Because there's four plots here, but really I only need one of these, or maybe kind of two of these. If I come down to the next thing, oh my gosh. So when you auto plot, when you use uh, GG Fortify to plot your residuals here, you really only need to look at this one thing. You need to look at this one thing here. And what are you looking for? Well, you're looking for equal scatter between the groups. So this represents one of the groups, another one of the groups, so on and so forth, right? Um, it really does not matter which one of these groups, you know, you, you don't need to differentiate which one of these groups is which, but what you do need to know is, you know, what we're looking for is no spread, uh, no sort of like outward spreading or anything, no fanning, uh, no inward fanning, no patterns, no nothing. We're looking for pretty consistent measures across each group. And we see that it is centered right here at zero because we're looking at differences now. We're looking at how our data differ from the mean of the group, right? Okay, so we check for patterns. We also need to check the distribution, okay, uh, of the residuals. So you can use this, what's called a normal QQ plot to do that. Ideally, you would like to have every single one of these points uh, at least on the line, uh, on this kind of plotted dotted line here, this gray line. This is a little tough, a little tricky to use at first um, when you're uh, a burgeoning statistician as you are. Uh, this is a little, eh, and this is kind of tough. What we'll stick to is transforming this into a histogram, which I've got here. Do we care about these other two, two plots? In other classes, yes. In this class, nope. <laughs> so we really only care about these two, more so the residuals versus fitted, uh, and we can replace the uh, QQ plot with a histogram. Now, how do you do that? So uh, we'll just go ahead and introduce some new functions again. We're gonna be using ggplot and we're gonna be getting kind of, we're getting kind of funky with it. Um, the data that I wanna specify is actually no data at all. I, ggplot is kind of weird because it does need a data it needs something here for data or else it gets kind of 
upset. Um, but if we just type in null there, we see that it kind of turns blue. Um, this satisfies ggplot, also satisfies us. Because I don't, uh, I don't, I'm not grabbing anything from this data. In fact, I'm grabbing something uh, that is calculated in the model. Okay, I know that's kind of weird, but if I come here to the aesthetics function, um, what I want to do is I want to plot the residual values that are calculated in our model. Okay, and that's saved in our model, uh, and we're able to access that with a resid function. Uh, in, in fact, we have a bunch of different options here. These two both do the same um, residuals and resid. I like to use resid just because it's shorter. Okay. And what do I put in here? Well, I don't put in the data because the data is just, just what we observed. Okay. What we have, what I want is the calculated residuals from the model that I made. Now, if I actually just highlight this, it's going to give me a bunch of values and we'll notice they're, they're pretty small. Some of these are, are small. Some of these are kind of large, whatever. This is just the mean of each group subtracted by the value from each group. Okay, so we have 40 residuals because we have 40 observations, 40 uh, data points, okay? And this is just uh, the observed value that we have. So in this case, 90 minus the mean of um, low protein beef, okay? And that's gonna be 10.8 in this case. We have the E plus one, just means that it goes out one more decimal. Um, okay, again, the math there on how you calculate it, no big deal. So if I just do this, if I run this, it's gonna plot the residuals on the x-axis, no biggie, right? And then I just want a histogram. That's really all I want. So I just give it genome histogram and go like that. Okay, already we need to know, we need to change the bins uh, and we can make this look a little bit prettier too. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Go ahead and try, if you're coding along, and I hope you are, um, go ahead and try to make this look uh, as good as you can, just so you can kind of see the overall shape of the residuals. Okay, so I'll pause the video, give it a try. Uh, we're just going to be adjusting the bins equal uh, argument within the geom histogram. Um, and I'll see you here in just a second. Okay. Okay, I'm back. So I've got the code written. Uh, I am just using this function here. Good Lord, it's really windy. <laughs> I think my house is gonna fall down. Uh, my house is like 200 years old, so I would not be surprised. So if you hear a crash, it's just uh, one of the side walls going down. Oh man, <laughs> so <laughs> I've got our base layer here uh, with X as the residuals. I'm just grabbing the residuals with this function of our model. Uh, and then I'm making it look pretty. I found that seven bins uh, was, was about good enough. Um, you can also use the base R function. So I put in, let me, let me be specific here, X equals, and then you just put in the residuals. You can use that. It's kind of ugly looking and it actually, the default in this case uh, is not necessarily the truth here. We're able to show a more normal distribution if we use seven bins rather than uh, six here. Um, again, this, you, the number of bins you choose is totally subjective. In this case, seven shows us that normal distribution, uh, and, and that's totally fine. Um, okay, so I'll get rid of, uh, I, I'll just leave it, whatever. Anyway, uh, I use color, col equals black, just to give that black outline across the bins, and then fill light blue, because I think it's pretty. <laughs> okay, so what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for a normal distribution of our residuals. So this, I think, is seemingly normal. It's not perfect, but it's, it's you know, better than something that's like very obviously skewed in one direction or the other, or it's better than something with no uh, sort of uh, distribution at all. It's better than a uniform distribution, okay? So the first thing that we look for, the first check, first resid, oops, resid check, is uh, equal scatter. That's the first thing that we always look for. And that is just looking at this, <laughs> this plot right here, let me zoom it in. Looking at this plot, we look to make sure that each of these uh, stacks here essentially are about the same group to group, okay? With no major curvature, 
no major fanning outward or fanning inward or like a bow tie shape. Um, right now, this looks pretty good. So our first check is passed. Always, 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 always check the residuals versus fit first for what I just mentioned. Okay, equal scatter across the groups. Very cool. And then the next thing you want to check is the is the distribution of the resids residuals. Okay. Sorry, I got a little delay between my keyboard and the monitor here. Um, anyway, so you always want to check then the normal QQ plot to make sure that most of the points are across the line. Again, let's let's kind of stray away from that at first, but we'll just check the histogram. And we'll make it ourselves. We'll check the histogram for that normal distribution. And to me, this is fine. This might not be fine to someone else, um, but since our first check was met with the equal scatter, then we can be a little bit more lax with, with how this looks. And in this case, this is, I think most statisticians would be okay with this. Um, again, if the first check fails, then don't even worry about checking the second one, okay? If the second check fails, well, you know, maybe we could do something to the data and we'll get into how we can transform data uh, in, in the future. But this is the order that you always check. Always check the scatter and then the distribution, okay? If the first one fails, don't check the distribution, okay? And that's that's kind of that. So you have to do it in that order. Um, let me see, let me see what else I got here. I believe, yeah, so, Oh yeah, in this case I used 12. So that even shows that kind of shape even a little bit better, uh, which, is, which is fine. So always check the scatter first and then the distribution and then the distribution. So after checking these two things, after checking these residuals, after checking sort of the relationship between our observed values that we have and the means per group, per group, we are then able to say, yes, okay, we can, hold on. <laughs> we can trust the fact that the ANOVA is, is not being biased in one direction or the other uh, based on this p-value, right? So the residuals look good. Now we can trust everything that's, that's given here. So run the model first, look at the p-value and say, okay, whatever, let me check then the residuals. And then you can come back and say, okay, yes, I can trust this. So a lot of work, right? A lot of things to check when you do this ANOVA business, okay? More than the t-tests. But now we can be certain that there is at least one different group in our data, okay? And then if you were to blow that up to the population, all rats <laughs> between these four groups, at least one of them is gonna be different, okay? But what group, which group? Oh my gosh, which group is different? How are we going to even start testing that? Because this ain't it. This ain't it. Okay. I'm going to stop the video and start a new one uh, so we can get into the kind of the last part of analysis here. Because we answered the question, is at least one group different? Yes. Now we got to figure out, oh, damn. Well, what group is different? Okay. Thankfully, R is pretty powerful and we can get somewhere very quickly with our conclusions. So with that, I will see you in the next one.